Greetings, RC model geeks. And here we are in the shed yet again for part two of the Sarik Hobbies de Havilland Canada Chipmunk build. So today I thought we'd look at the vertical fin here. Um, a few of the parts are laser cut, like the post here and the ribs here. Uh, and then we've also got this front leading edge, uh, which is slightly curved. Now, I don't think that part is actually supplied, so we need to make that. Now, technically, there's two ways you could make that. You could have a straight strip and bend it or you can cut it that shape and I think probably that is what I'm going to do I'm going to cut it um, out of a piece of stock with that curve already in it so I'm going to find some bits and we will start construction Right, so something must be happening because look, people have turned up. I was old Bix though, the biscuit boy. Biscuit boy? Yeah, he's got biscuits and even Pete's turned up. So... Uh, I didn't even know about the biscuits. No, you didn't know about the biscuits, did you? So yeah, so um, you know, building has been, been interrupted anyway? for the day. In and around. In and around. No. Yeah, how's, how's the tornado, mate? Tornado is, uh, I'm waiting for a call from a guy I know called Rob. Yeah. He's going to say, Pete, down the beach tonight, I'll get the old six cell oh, charged it's up. Oh, my fault. And then, that. Then, then we're off. Oh, yeah. Is it in the shed or is it in the garage, the, mate? It's in the garage. People want to know this stuff. No, it's in the garage and it's uh, got a little bit of uh, bubble wrap around it. All right. Okay, yeah. just to protect it. But it's in the garage, which is far better than in the loft in this heat. So I am looking after the baby. Excellent, excellent. But as soon as that bloke Rob calls me and says, Pete, we're down the beach tonight, providing it's not a Friday or a Saturday or possibly Sunday afternoon or, 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 or Monday evening. or a Tuesday when I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. Uh, pass the biscuits around. Yeah, pass the biscuits around. Which ones are these? What's on the uh, label? Oh, oh. chocolate biscuits. Oh, we'll get a picture of that. Oh. Oh, we like them ones, don't we? They're nice. Oh, thanks, Pete. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't worry about my hands. Mm. Can I have one? Yeah. You, you can have one as you bought We well, know where your hands have been, mate. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> right. Normal viewing will be resumed shortly on the tripod. Right, okay, so we're back to it. So we talked about this uh, bit uh, here earlier, which is on a, uh, a slight curve. And uh, I said I'd probably just cut it out as a curve, but in the end I thought, you know what, let's do it proper. Let's bend the bit of wood. And there it is. Uh, and that fits uh, pretty much perfect on there. So I thought I'd show you how to steam bits of wood. So it's not as difficult as it sounds and you know what, it's quite quick. So what I've got here is a kettle. Let's uh, move that up, shall we? There we go. So yeah, like I said, I've got a kettle. And uh, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna steam a bit of wood. I've got a bit here. I'm just gonna steam this and, uh, and show you how easy it is. So um, we're gonna use the steam from the kettle to, uh, to bend this. So the kettle's on, she's boiling, cup of coffee coming up. But while you're making your coffee or your tea, you just get your bit of wood and put it over. Now you know it wants to go into a curve, so I'm pre-tensioning it slightly. And I'm just holding it over the steam. Mm. My lid's falling off.
and there you go. That's as easy as it gets. Yeah, so you can work that in your hands, steam it, tweak it, steam it, tweak it. Like you're bending a piece of wire, really, if you're trying to get a shape, um, but using the steam to make it the, uh, the wood pliable. And just work your way around to get your curve or whatever. Keep trying it on the plan so you get your shape right. Um, remember, as it cools down, it'll probably spring back a little bit, so you want to generally just sort of over tweak it slightly and then it will spring back uh, to the right shape so that is how you do it fairly easy and like I said we made a bit here so that is one of the parts for the rudder so I'm going to carry on uh, getting the parts and uh, we'll see how far we get Now on this uh, on this drawing, you'll see these ribs here. They've all got a taper on them to bust up to this bit of wood we just bent. So I'm going to have to sand an angle on the end of each of those ribs, two, three, four, and five. It's a 90 degree angle at this end, so that's fine. Apart from this bottom one, number one that's got a double angle it's got a bit of an angle on the back here and a bit of an angle on the front so I'm gonna get on with sanding those uh, angles into those ribs and then I'll come back to you okay so we have the basics of the fin uh, ready to go now these ribs um, all need a taper on one end uh, so that they butt up nicely to this leading edge and what I do is I've got an adjustable protractor just like this and so I get the angles uh, right by measuring it off the plan and then I transfer that angle onto the end of the rib mark it with a pencil and then sand it back so I get the uh, the angle that's uh, required so that is all good so this is pretty much ready to go uh, together now um, I've just got to do a little bit of sanding on this this just wants a slight taper um, on it for where the um, the leading edge, or where the sorry the, the side sheeting goes onto it, it goes in slightly like uh, like that. So uh, just got to sand that. But in the meantime, um, my neighbour has just come round and uh, and asked me to look at his uh, his car because it's got a seized back brake, uh, and he's quite uh, elderly, and his wife's got Parkinson's, so. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at that and see if I can free that up. If it doesn't take too long, uh, I will come back and we will finish this uh, fin today. Um, if I don't come back, then I'll say see you all tomorrow for part three, and this will be quite a short part two. But, you know, you've always got to um, help out people that need help. So um, I'm going to go and do that. So, might see you in a minute, might not. I'm back. Hands slightly dirty from brakes. But, that's all done. So, I've quickly got on with this vertical fin and glued it together. And there it is. That is the basics of it lovely jubbly looks the part so the final thing for this is to have uh, I think it's 16th uh, balsa sheet over it to finish it off now before I do that I need to think about these hinges 
Now, these hinges uh, were originally made of um, formica, which is basically a kind of sort of plasticky, shitty thing. Um, and then I was going to make them out of glass fibre. And then I thought, what's the point? What is the point in doing all that when these beautiful hinges are available? And uh, do you know what? I've never had one of these break. Um, they're brilliant. So, uh, we need to just do a little bit of tweaking to get these hinges to sit like that in there and there. So I'm going to do a bit of drilling uh, in this fin and then probably add a little bit of wood in there as well to support this hinge um, and then the same in the rudder and then once that's done uh, we can clad that vertical fin. Seems like a plan to me and uh, yeah let's do it. Okay there we go that is beautiful. That works perfect, uh, much better than uh, than the bit of formica, or probably, in fact, a uh, a bit of glass fibre. So yeah, I just created two wedges, and then drilled the hole down the centre of them, and uh, Bob's your uncle. That lines up perfect. Yeah, the hinge line is offset to the back of this uh, uh, this bit of wood here, so that's why the hinges are in so far. But yeah, that that looks pretty damn good to me. So that is what I'm going to do, and it stiffens everything up as well. So uh, I've got to do the same down the bottom now. Make two more wedges, donk them in there, drill the hole, um, insert. Uh, said um, hinge and Bob's your uncle so yeah and then of course I've got to uh, do the same to this bit I've got to put some strengthener in there and in there drill hole through uh, blah 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 but uh, looking good looking good so um, I'll get on with that and we'll see where we uh, end up before the end of the day. So, great progress. There are the two parts. Oops, I'll pick it up. There's the rudder with the uh, new hinges in it. Added some extra blocks there and there. And on the other side to support the hinges and then added a couple of blocks on the fin one there one there and so then the whole thing will basically just slot together and there you go and there we have a hinged fin and rudder right so now we can move on and the final thing on this drawing here for this fin is the 1 16th sheet. Um, so this whole fin is sheeted. And the sheeting actually comes over the edge. Uh, it sticks out probably two millimeters past the end um, because it sort of hides the uh, the leading edge of the rudder. So um, I'm going to find a bit of sixteenth sheet and uh, and get this covered, and then we'll have a finished fin. Brilliant. 
So I've sheeted one side of the vertical fin. And that is as tough as now. So uh, yeah, obviously a sheet won't do the whole lot. Um, so the bit you cut off here ends up down here. Uh, simple. Uh, as you can see, grain is running vertically as per the drawing here. So I've just got to sheet the other side. I'm using super glue um, to build this. I'm, I'm not using wood glue. Uh, I'm using my usual suspect here, the industrial grade super glue GP. Um, brilliant. And you've seen how strong that is thanks to the storch. So, uh, yes, I'm going to get on with sheeting this other side. Um, and then we will call it uh, a day, because time is, is getting on already. Um, yeah, long day. Right, let me get this done. Right, there you go. There is the vertical fin. All lovely, jubbly, and very light, very strong. Um, you'd be amazed how, uh, how strong that is. There is the overhang. I don't know if you can see that. Look at it that way, it might work. Um, where the hinge of the rudder gets hidden. There you go. So, all is good. Obviously, we've got to sand the rudder to its final shape. This uh, this tip block on this rudder needs sanding back um, to the shape of this fin. Obviously, we couldn't do that until we had the fin finished. <laughs> so that's it. Bit of an interruption car brakes had to be done for the next door neighbour but we got the fin finished and it's now what seven o'clock in the evening again so I don't know what we're doing tomorrow I'm still waiting for some bits and pieces to uh, to turn up um, so I haven't decided maybe we'll do the uh, horizontal stabiliser you know since we uh, we know what we're doing with this now and we know how to do the hinging uh, quite easily because uh, the elevators have the same hinging, of course. Um, we might just build the uh, the elevator halves, but it's coming together quite nicely. Looking forward to uh, to flying this one because I know it's going to fly beautiful. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, thanks for all your uh, comments and stuff. Uh, always welcome. And uh, I'll see you in the next video, hopefully tomorrow. Thank you for watching Captain Rob's RC Model Geeks. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click that like button. If you want to see more of the same type of videos, don't forget you can subscribe. If you want to support us, you can use PayPal, paypal.me forward slash RC Model Geeks. If you want to contact us, you can email us, rcmodelgeeks at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.